Hello and welcome or welcome back to Cast On, a knitting podcast where I talk about my finished objects, my whips, some yarn acquisitions and some knitting things. My name is Ellie, I am from Austria and this is episode number 24. It's been a while guys, it's been a hot minute uh, since I recorded, a lot has happened since the last time and I know I've been pushing out this episode for a while because it's been a rough couple of weeks for me, I gotta be honest. If you're not super interested in my personal life then that is completely fine, you can fast forward. Um, but I just want to tell you a little bit about what's been going on in my life. My boyfriend and me, we broke up, uh, we separated and I helped him move out of this apartment and I am also looking for my own place right now as well. I also want to move out from here just because it doesn't feel right to me, it's too big and I just, I just want my own place. So that is kind of the big news uh, that's been happening. I've not been super well, it's been very difficult for me. I've not been in a great uh, headspace. I've also not been feeling like knitting so you might not see a lot of progress on my uh, projects but it's been just very very hard. Um, I'm just very hurt at the minute and very fragile so I do hope you understand my situation and I don't want to go too much in depth uh, with this but I just wanted to let you know that that has happened and I don't know what's what's going to happen in the future. But this is a knitting podcast and not a crying podcast, so I want to talk about the Zoom call that I have teasered in the last episode and then feels like never talked about it ever again. I am really, really sorry about this. If you do follow me on Instagram, which you should definitely do, you do know a little bit more about the behind the scenes of what's been going on and uh, stuff like that. So I thought we could do the zoom call in a week so next Friday I'm gonna put the date and the time up here <coughs> sorry I had to sneeze <laughs> I think it's from all the fluff that's uh, floating around in the air yeah the zoom call next Friday it is going to be in the evening and it is going to be the Berlin time because that is the time zone I am in as well so I hope that a lot of you can join me. I would be really, really happy to see at least a couple of faces. I will put up a community post here on YouTube with the Zoom link and I will also put an Instagram post up in my stars where you can find the link uh, so you can join. You don't have to stay for long, you can also just pop in to say hi but it would make me really happy to have a few people uh, pop in and we can talk about I love for the crafts, about knitting, um, all of the good stuff. We don't always just have to talk about knitting but that is the idea, a Zoom knit night and yeah I just really hope that a lot of you will turn up. Right. That is the really long winded intro and I think we can get started with the knitting things. Before that, grab yourself a drink and your knitting. I have got myself a ceramic cup. I made this myself, I am kind of proud of it but at the same time kind of hate it. Um, after everything that's been happening, I really wanted to do something for myself that I've been wanting to do for a while but just never got around to it and that was going to a ceramics class. I went to Fresh Ceramics here in Vienna, they do have um, some longer classes but they have a, a coffee and clay and a wine and clay, so one is an evening class and the other one is like a midday class which is what I did and made myself a coffee cup and painted it. The reason why I said I kind of hate it is because this is supposed to be green, it's kind of brown and 
there was supposed to be around like rosy flowers so they just completely disappeared which it looks odd now because they don't look like hearts because some of them are upside down but it is what it is. I made this myself. I had so much fun. Would highly recommend you go on a little uh, self-care date with yourself and do something fun and something you have always been wanting to do but just never gotten around to it. So I got myself a, it's a kind of a cappuccino instant coffee mix but I like it so. No judgement here, please, because this is a judgement-free zone. Anyway, finished objects. I do have one finished object. And I'm really happy uh, with this, but I think it's still damp. I blocked this and then I thought four days would be enough for it to dry. It wasn't. It's been quite cold, so it's still a bit wet. This is my summer knoes by... Elizabeth Judith I think she's called I love this thing I know I will get lots and lots of wear out of this this summer it looks so good at least in my opinion and I mean I have to wear it so I, that's really the opinion that counts <laughs> I had so much fun making this I as you know I am really into texture, I need kind of engaging knits and this is exactly what I've been wanting. This was so quick, the stitch gauge is 28 stitches and I held a Vikingan Bambino double. I do have some leftovers, this is the yarn. It is a blend of 50% cotton, 50% bamboo and you get 176 meters the stitch gauge is 28 stitches per 4 inches so I held this double and then I switched needle sizes because uh, I was not on gauge I don't think I was on gauge for the rest of the shirt but the recommended needle size is 5 millimeter needles I used 4.5 because I am a looser knitter and I'm really happy with this. I think the gauge issue was not that big of an issue. So you have some short rows in the back here. <clears throat> That's where you start. And then you kind of get straight into the texture. I don't think you can really see where the beginning of round was. Just here by like the, the pearl to pearl rows. Like down here. But I think from afar you can't really tell, which is a good sign for me. Like I said, this was so much fun. It is a circular yoke, so some people, it might not fit on everyone. I personally really like circular yokes, even though they don't fit the best. Uh, I still like to make them and I still like to wear the shirts. And I have nothing bad to say about the pattern. I did a few modifications so first of all the needle size and then second of all I used I'm pretty sure I used a tighter gauge um, I could be wrong on that I mean I used two fingering held together to get DK weight but then I used four and a half millimeter needles to kind of get 18 stitches um, I can't remember what the recommended yarn is in the actual pattern but that's what I did and I'm really happy with it so I think that is just what counts the most <laughs> I shortened the sleeves and the body you are supposed to have a one by one rib at the bottom so I kind of shortened this section here you're supposed to still have <clears throat> I ended here and you're supposed to have another inch or so <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is kind of going. I was just really happy with the length when I tried it on. I like my shirts to be like hitting just my hip bones because I do 
wear high-waisted jeans, high-waisted trousers and most of my dresses like this one, they do have a gathered skirt so the skirt starts by the waist and it looks odd if something is longer like past the waist um, because then it just looks like a box. So that's what I did and then I also bound off differently I think the last two rows are two pearl rows and then one knit row and then I bound off I used the is it Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast off I never know the name of this it was one of the first cast offs that I learned and I really like it it's essentially why you have a yarn over in between I think it gives it a really nice look because I wanted to recreate the neckline. The neckline has got uh, just, you cast on with a, um, what's the name? Oh my god, the normal cast on that everyone does. Yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> the normal cast on. Oh, my brain is just not there today. I'm really sorry. But I wanted to keep it the same and I thought the one by one rib uh, might not make it look the same. I don't know. I don't know. My brain works in strange ways. So that is what I did to have like a thicker um, pearl edge. And I think it turned out really nice. So this is my summer canoe is my one and only finished object very quickly about the yarn i said this last time as well this is so soft i do expect it to stretch because it is bamboo and cotton and the only issue i had with this yarn so i would buy this yarn again let's start with that i would buy it again i know this is inga's from the knitting traditions uh, favorite summer yarn i can totally see why it is very soft it is very pleasant to knit with i personally had a bit of a hard time um tensioning the yarn because it was so silky smooth that it kind of slipped off my fingers so i had to grip it a bit tighter, wrap it around my fingers uh, a few more times to just tension it a bit better without it slipping. The only problem I had with this yarn, and this might just be this colour, I really don't know, it bled so much. I'm actually going to put a picture in because I took one because I wanted to show you how much it bled. I did not expect this at all. I know that oranges and reds and those kind of colors can bleed a lot but i have made a lot of uh, red things in the past and none of them have been this bad i was so glad that i did not put anything else in the wash with this garment i mean the wash i normally put it in like a in a tub uh, but i was really glad that i didn't have anything else with it because i know it would have stained and I also had to wash my towels afterwards immediately because I was so worried that it would just stain everything. I avoided that, <laughs> luckily, but I just wanted to mention it that you do have to be aware that especially this colour will stain and it will bleed quite substantially. Right, so that is my one and only finished object. I'm just going to take a sip. I do have some leftovers because I shortened it. These are my two uh, leftovers from the skeins I used. And then I have two more full skeins. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I find it really difficult to find or to make projects with summer fibers. Maybe some kind of uh, hat or not hat, uh, like a bandana or like an accessory. I don't know, I have to see. I'm not super fussed about getting this out of stash because for now it's just going into the scrap pile that I have. Right, whips now. 
I am so excited about all of my whips. I think I'm in a really good place. They do stress me out mildly, but I really just want to cast on so, so many things, especially after last week's video, which you should also check out if you haven't already. I tell you about 15 different summer patterns, which I also would really like to make uh, to give you a bit of inspiration. So the first thing is something I did not cast on <clears throat> um, recently. This has been going on for a while and it is my Moonset Tea by Ozetta. This is what it looks like. I am using 3mm needles. It's a bit scrunched up. Um, last time I just joined uh, in the round but now I have two sleeves. I finished both of them and I also sewed down the collar in the back which also didn't happen last time. The collar, sewing, sewing down the collar was really difficult. I had such a hard time. This was the first time uh, doing a technique like that and I can't say I enjoyed it. <laughs> I found it really difficult. I don't know if it matches up perfectly. I also did it way too tightly so you can see how it scrunches up where I put the seam in. Kind of rolls over on itself. I hope that I can kind of block this out. If not, I mean it's in the back. It's My hair is long enough to, to like cover that. I'm not too fussed about it, but that is just something I wanted to mention. And then for the sleeves, I made them smaller. You're supposed to have four sets of decreases. I only did three because, first of all, they were at a good length uh, on my arm. I don't like super long sleeves. And I don't have enough yarn. I know this from the get-go. I am using Olivia and Oliver Fiber... Uh, fingering merino in the color feather it is 100% merino so I don't think this is going to be super summer friendly but I really wanted to use this yarn for this project and I'm so glad I did because I think it just looks incredible so that is why I made the sleeves shorter because for the smallest size it's supposed to uh, have 813 meters and I only have 800 I mean those 13 meters don't make a big difference but I think I like to have a shorter body um, than like really tiny sleeves so this is where I'm at I have knit quite a bit on the the body as well and I'm really enjoying this even though it is a fingering weight project I don't know if I said I'm using 3mm needles. So it is a fingering weight uh, project. It goes by faster than I expected, which I'm not mad about. It is the yarn, I have to say. It is 100% the yarn, why I'm enjoying this so, so much. I'm using helical knitting, so I alternate skeins every round. And this gives it that bit of interest that I need in my project, that bit of engagement that I really crave, so it's not just knitting it around, around, around. So that is how it looks like. The speckles have definitely changed once again. I'm not sure how well the camera picks it up. For the sleeves, I used the same skein, <clears throat> so that the sleeves at least are the same. But you can tell that I did not alternate skeins, because you have way less speckles than the rest. This one's got a bit, a few more speckles, but yeah. Really enjoying this, don't know when I'm going to finish it. Um, but I have absolutely no stress with this. This is going to be like a transitional piece because the summers are super hot here and I would definitely make this again. I think this would be such an amazing summer shirt. I'm not going to make any one anytime soon because first of all I have so many other projects that I want to make um, but also because I have one of the fingering uh, weight knit and 
I need variety. So that is my Moon Set Tea by Rosetta and we can move on with my second whip. So my second whip is something you've not seen um, for a while or maybe you have, I don't know. It feels like I've not been, uh, I've not worked on this forever. It is my Magnolia Chunky Cardigan by Camilla Bad. And the deadline for this is getting closer and I'm mildly stressed about this. So I really need to put everything else on hold and just work on this. Without breaking my wrists and without losing way too much motivation uh, to come back to my other projects. That is the big challenge really. This is what it looks like. So far it is a cardigan. Uh, I already made one sleeve and since last time I now have a second sleeve and now I'm supposed to do the the lace, this lace here. So for some context, let's start with that. <laughs> this is going to be a present for my mum. Her birthday is in about three weeks so I really really have to like power through this. Uh, her birthday is in three weeks, but we are celebrating in two weeks, so it has to be blocked by then as well. I am making the size XL or M. I have to I have to look that up. You can always check out my Ravelry if you don't know about uh, something or if I don't mention anything. I have everything on my Ravelry page there. It could be M. It's the third size um, from the size range, whatever that is. But that is the size I'm making. I am using uh, Drops Cotton Merino in the color 28. It is a really nice uh, blush pink. And then I'm using Phil Colana Tilia again in also really nice blush pink like this. This is the color 321 and together they make this adorable bubblegum uh, pink. Well not bubblegum, it's like a piggy, piggy's pink. I don't know, at least that's what we say in German. So yeah, um, what I was saying about the sleeve, I now have a sleeve, like a second sleeve. But because the first one is a tiny bit short and I don't know if this will actually block out, I'm just going to make this a few rows uh, longer and then I have to rip back uh, on this leaf which kind of breaks my heart because I'm done with this project. I've been working on this for almost two months now. I'm not super into lace at the moment either. When I started this I had lots of lace projects going on. Um, I just want to finish this. So I'm kind of sad that I have to rip back this whole section. Um, but I really want this to fit properly and I really want my mum to like it. So I'd rather do that now than gift it and she won't, like it won't fit properly. So that is what I've been doing with this and then at the bottom, you won't be able to see, this is the, the bottom. I just did a few more rows of it. Everything is blown out today. Um, maybe like this. <laughs> uh, last time I just did the two bubbles, left and right and just, I don't know, that's probably an inch. Not even an inch that I that I made. It's the lace that's kind of holding me back on this, and also because I know this won't be finished uh, when I bind off the body. I know I still have to do the button band. I've never made a cardigan before. I've never made <clears throat> a button band before. I do have some buttons in mind. I don't know if I will actually be able to get the ones that I want because I saw them in a fabric shop in my hometown and I don't think I'll be able to get to my hometown uh, before my mom's party. Sorry. My nose itches from the mohair. So, yeah, just powering through. I think I want to finish the body first 
to see also how long it is. She wore my sweater number 18. She borrowed the sweater for a few hours because she was cold when she came around and it fit her so well. I'm really, really jealous because it fit her so much better than me. So I might also make her another uh, project for Christmas, sweater number 18. I think she would also really like that. I'm not too sure about the cardigan anymore, but honestly, if she doesn't wear it, then I tried. <laughs> and yeah, I think that is everything with this for now. Not a lot of progress on it, but by next time, I really should have finished this. I really hope I can do it. If not, I'm going to be very disappointed in myself because I started this, like I said, at least two months earlier, not like last year, and still wouldn't be able to finish it. That would be sad. Anyway, the uh, Drops Cotton Merino, it is a super wash yarn, and it's 50% wool, 50% cotton. Again, this is also super, super soft. Um, I find this very nice to work with as well. I mean, I am holding it with mohair, but just touching it, I think this also is a great summer fiber. Obviously not as soft as the Viking gun because it's got bamboo in it, but cotton can be really dry on its own. So if you want to pair it with wool and be more affordable, I would recommend you getting some of this stuff as well. So that was my cardigan, or should I say my mum's cardigan, <clears throat> and now I have some projects that I cast on recently. The first thing is a test knit. I signed up for a test knit, it's, it's been a while, it's been a hot minute again, and the last test knit I did was a year ago I think, not just quite a year ago, but this is... This is a stitch to wear, a test knit for, I think she's called Courtney. She's got a quite, a, quite an interesting Instagram handle and I know it starts with a Q. So I'm, I'm going to have to put it in. I'm really sorry, I'm such a bad test knitter. But I'm also really bad with names. <laughs> so this is a stitch to wear, a fingering weight, uh, once again, <laughs> project. And it is around York, once again. This I do have, I saw the test knit, the test knit, oh my gosh, I can't talk. The test knit started, I think, two or three weeks ago. And it ends in either the middle or the end of July. I could be wrong on that, but I know the deadline for uh, the body is the beginning of July. So I have plenty of time. I was supposed to finish the yoke at the beginning of June, so I'm also way ahead of time. It's still, uh, I think, a week or two uh, before uh, June. So this is what it looks like. Not very interesting at all uh, just yet. The fun bit comes with the sleeves because you have these really cool ruffled uh, sleeves. So I am looking forward to, the, to that. It has been a bit of a slog, I'm not gonna lie. I am using three millimeter needles. What's this? Yeah, three millimeter needles, once again. And I'm using Sanaskan Tin Lina. It is my favorite uh, summer yarn, hands down. Do I have a skein? Yeah. There we go. It is the color 3021 and it is a very nice light like beige color. I don't know if it's going to be too close to my skin tone. I am very worried about that but I really like the, the color and I think if I don't like it either I'm not going to wear it or I might be able to dye it. Um, but yeah this is what it looks like. I split for sleeves which is super exciting, uh, considering that it is a fingering weight project uh, in the round. The increases are very, very uh, interesting. So normally with the round yoke, the increases seem to be very... There doesn't seem to be a lot of 
like system behind it but with this you are you are you do have some markers and you essentially have raglan increases dotted all around the yoke i think you have about 19 um stitch markers i'm making the size b um and i i was supposed to have 19 I don't know if that includes the beginning of round now. I have to check. But yeah, you have some short rows uh, in the back. Can't tell at all, which is a good sign, I think. And then you have your increases. I really don't know if you can even tell. Let me get this a bit. Probably not. But there's like a line going down. I don't think you can tell. Which again, is it is a good sign. So you have like all of these small raglan increases. You work a certain number of rows. And then you have the increases on the left and the right side of the marker. With one stitch in between. Which was a technique I have never used before. But it is so clever. I don't know if she came up with this herself. Or if it's something that you can or should do with the circular yolks anyways i really don't know but i thought that was a very interesting <clears throat> technique and yeah now i split for sleeves the sleeves will i might work these before i work the body i do have to work a few centimeters on the body so i can make the sleeves as neat as possible and they're going to be worked uh, in the round on my Chiago uh, needle set. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to it. Super exciting. If you like the design, definitely watch out for the pattern when it comes out. Of course, I'm gonna show you this many times until then as well. And this has been kind of my train knit because it's just in the round and it is you can scrunch it up super small like this has this just does not have a lot of uh whoops <laughs> whacked my plant uh this does not have a lot of like wool has a lot of like not density but fluff and this is not it so i'm really happy with that <clears throat> Kind of slow going, I really pushed myself to get the yoke done uh, as soon as possible so I do have more time to finish uh, everything else. I am also doing waist shaping for the very first time, I've never done this before but I am really excited because I think this design looks really good with waist shaping and we'll see. Maybe I like waist shaping so much that I'm gonna implement it in all of my garments. Maybe I hate it. Who knows? So that was my other whip. And then the last one that I have for you today is also a new cast on. I've just really been feeling like spring cleaning <laughs> for my yarn. And I went through um, my sock scraps and i've just really been feeling casting on some socks so i did i am making a sock. oh my god i'm making a sock tube that was just a combination of both words a sock tube again inga from the knitting traditions loves them i know someone else I watched another person's podcast and uh, she said she hated them because the process was fun but they don't fit right so I thought I would just try it with some scraps no big deal it's not super fancy yarn um, and it is a way to use up all of my scraps so I started this this is going so fast I really enjoy making socks I only started making them last December so it's not been <clears throat> I've not been knitting socks for like 10 years or whatever. But this is so fun. <laughs> I made a one by one rib cuff. I did use the old Norwegian cast on, which is supposed to be really stretchy, but it seems really tight. So I hope I can get this over my foot. 
But again, this is some leftover sock yarn. It is Ferner Wolle, which is an Austrian uh, wool producer or yarn company. And this is their Christmas um, line. Is it called? It's got some kind of uh, numbers. I will link it again in the description down below and uh, in on my Ravelry project. I do have a pair of socks uh, in this yarn already, so you can also check that out. I have quite a lot of scraps because in this ball of yarn, I have the other one. I don't have the label anymore. I think. Let me just check. Which one is this? Mm. I don't know if that's the correct label, but this is essentially what they look like. They're both like I have two uh, colorways from the same line, and it is Fenavola uh, Mali socks, the Christmas edition. It is 75% uh, superwash wool and 25% uh, polyamide. It is a DK weight, you get 450 meters in the 150 gram ball, which was this, it was absolutely gigantic. And uh, you, can, you can't put it in the washing machine, so you have to hand wash it. I think, yeah. It is a DK weight, so 3.5 to 4 millimeter needles is the recommended needle size. Again, loose knitter, so I am just using 3mm needles. I don't know, it seems a bit dense, but to be honest, I'd rather have my socks to be dense than too loose. Oops. And this is just kind of a fun side project. I don't have uh, any plans with this, I just wanted to use up the scraps. This is the first uh, scrap ball that I have, and then this is the second one. They kind of belong together. So you can you can see that even my scraps are big scraps. <laughs> I mean, I only made one pair out of the whole ball. So I know I can squeeze out a second pair and then would still have scraps. Um, but I'm just going to make a super long tube with hopefully all of this. And then divide it in however many pairs I can get out of it. Probably... Well, at least two pairs and then maybe even a third that might be pushing it. I don't know. First, I'm making a sock tube. I have no idea how I'm going to do the heel. I have no idea what's what's going to happen, uh, how long I'm supposed to make this. But I'm just going here with my gut and I know the amount of rows I have for a nice uh, leg. And I know how many amount of rows I have uh, to have on my foot from the split from the um, heel to the toe. So I kind of can gauge it. So yeah, that is my last whip. Just a fun little side project uh, to have on the go. And that doesn't take up a lot of space. And that also goes by a bit quicker and it's not just a fingering whip project. Right, those were all of my whips. I don't have any yarn acquisitions because I do have to save money now because I'm living on my own. I'm trying to find a different apartment and who knows what's going to happen in the future. I really don't know. I am very much up in the air and kind of... Yeah, it's just been, a, it's been very difficult and... It's not going to be any uh, better uh, anytime soon. But I just have to, I think I just have to embrace it. I have to learn how to deal with these difficult situations and grow from them to be a better person. And you can never stop growing uh, as a person, I think, either. You have to push yourself to an extent and get further than of what you thought you could do to be in that growing phase because you have to leave your comfort zone as much as 
we all don't love to leave the comfort zone because that's why it's called a comfort zone but you can only really grow when you exceed uh, that line and get further from there yeah i hope you had a good time here with me chatting about my knits uh, again i'm just a bit all over the place i hope you can uh, respect that leave me a comment down below to let me know what you're working on are you still in the winter knits or are you full on in summer knits uh, i think i'm still in between i would really like to cast on a lot of sweaters but i know it's probably not very wise to do that so yeah, let me know down below what you're up to, how you've been feeling. I don't know, send me a comment about the weather. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I would be really happy to see some of you on the Zoom knit night next Friday. And until then, happy knitting and have a good week or weekend whenever you're going to watch this. Bye!